So have you since played Silent Hill for production started. Yeah, I, I, I tried when it, for research, I tried and, um, and it totally honestly, I, I, it really scares me, genuinely, it terrifies me playing those games, you know, yeah. I used to get terrified playing Doom, you know, and, and this is a very similar thing, I, I, I can watch horror films, I love horror films, but playing video game horror films, playing video games that are horrors, that really throws me, I don't like it, it makes me uncomfortable. So no, I haven't. That's fair. <laughs> Video game movies are notoriously challenging to connect with audiences. And yeah. What were you guys cognizant of that on the set and trying to make this something that audiences could really get into? Yeah, I think um, you know they've got a checkered past. Video games that you turn into into movies. I always feel that if it's got a strong enough story, like I think Silent Hill does, that it will work as a video game. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done this movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's always like with so many things now. It's an adaptation, and adapting to, to you know to please everyone is is nigh on impossible. So you have to just trust in what you're doing and trust what the director's doing. And I, I really trusted in Michael, and I think he knows this game inside out and backwards. You know, he, he knows it, and you just have to hear him talk about it. And he knows he's got all these theories, and so yeah, I trusted in him. But I think yeah. It, 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 hopefully it'll turn out for the best. <laughs> this franchise has been around for years. Yeah. What, what do you think it has in for so long? Why is it, what's wrong? What are the elements that yeah. make it endure for so long? I think it's, um, as a, it's, it's been around, well, as a video game, what make, what the elements that it, make it? It's a video game for 12 years. Ago. Yeah. Like yeah. I think it's it's what I love about uh, this, you know, about Silent Hill as as a video game or as a movie is that the the elements of not being sure of you know insecurity or like the, the, this overall paintbrush of, of fear that is created rather than it just being a jump factor thing. You know, it's um I think the, in the video game how you can choose different paths and one of them might be wrong and one of them might be right. That that in itself is quite tension making and I think hopefully we bring that to the film of, of you don't know whether these characters have made the right or wrong choices or you don't know if what they're seeing is real or what reality is you know all of that kind of that vibe around the film I think that's what people fall in love with yeah your character in the movie sort of seems like he's dragged into Silent Hill world through Heather's journey mm -hmm. uh, so what can you tell us about your character's experience and stuff? I can't say too much about my character. Um, I know that's a cop out and it's boring, but I, out of everyone in this movie, I think I've got the character that I can't really talk about. You know, he, there's going to be some surprises about who he is and, and what he is, and surprises for people who have played the game because he differs. You know, and I was always told by the director, maybe don't, don't go too, you know, too far to look at your character in the game because we're going to change him, so that might not be helpful. Um, I, I put it this way, I liked him as a character, and I'd like him as a human being if I met him. So I think that's, that's about as far as much as I can say. Is there more freedom in playing a character that is very different from the source material versus playing like Jon Snow in Game of Thrones, where mm -hmm. we see very much of his head in the books? The, I mean, both, yeah, both the first two TV or film things I did have been adaptations, so there's always been a source material there definitely say with Thrones I went far more into looking at him in the books so as to how to play him for screen than I did for this because I don't think it was helpful for this. It's always a kind of balancing act of how much you stay true to the source material and how much you make it your own and you have to do both. And hopefully you find a happy medium. Um, but yeah, I, they, they were very different beasts, these two things. So was it? What, like, did you find freedom in the fact that uh, that you were sort of creating this character fresh, or was it more difficult because you didn't have to? freedom? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it 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 was it was nice to be able to start afresh with the character. Although I've always had the slight fear that people know who this character, like with Jon Snow, people know who this character is already. They have predetermined ideas of who he is, and will I live up to what? they want him to be it's, it's always slightly scary that situation but in the actual process you know of, of, make, of creating him as a character I enjoyed that freedom yeah. just kind of 
follow up on that question. When, when you're an actor and you do take, a, take on a role of the character that's kind of like a tiny which is source material, how yeah. do you know where to draw the line in terms of how much promise? When what, sir? How, how do you know when to draw the line in terms of how much promise you want to do yeah. before you go with the Are you like, are you going to play the game to a certain extent and go, wait a second, yeah. it's maybe because if you play the game, then that's, that's, you can't help but not. But bring something of yeah. that character, yeah. Um, I don't know, I, I, I decided not to look at the character in the game too much with this, because I was warned against doing that. Uh, and I just, I looked at, and, and for example in, in Thrones, there's a lot of people who haven't, haven't read the books. They, they decide to just go on what the scripts say. And that's one way of doing things, there's nothing wrong with that. But with this, that's more of the approach I took. I didn't want to get too close to the character in the game, because I knew it would be so different. Not so different, but there would be differences. So on Thrones, you're no stranger to working with special effects, but this movie is clearly extremely special effects intensive. Is that a different challenge for you as an actor, or is it all just acting? There was no. There was very. There was one incredible CGI sequence in this, which I've seen and I wasn't part of. But apart from that, it was all very visceral. There were lots of people dressed up in costumes. It was. It was there was hardly any CGI. You know. Um, in Thrones, there's very little CGI. Actually, you know, the, it's it's quite sort of anything that can be made or can be created it is done and I always I think that can only help actors I've done bits and pieces you know, on other things where it's heavily CGI and it, it I mean it does take quite a lot of imagination to go right you're in a green room and this is uh, you know you're floating in space or something I don't know it's kind of it's um it's, it's it's incredibly difficult sometimes CGI so I've been lucky with these two things and I think it helped in this in this film okay. There's very little CGI in this film. Yeah, no, I mean, it's apart from the one sequence, there's virtually none. You know, and, and uh, that's um, I think that's very rare these days. Very kind of um, very very good. I, I I enjoyed it that way around. Game, game of Thrones is a budgeted show. Mm-hmm. How, how does it compare to shooting something on that scale versus shooting something on the scale? Well, how would you compare the scale of Game of Thrones to a smaller movie? Well, TV is always going to have, even if it is thrown, it's going to have less money than a film. So this probably it was on the same scale as Thrones as far as what what we had, what resources we had for this. So it, it was a... It's interesting shooting Thrones because it's it's very high budget TV, so I've been spoiled as to, as to what TV is and what TV means, you know. Um, so I moved into film, and, and actually it was very little difference in how long the setups took, in in what um, what the props department was like, you know. It's all it was. It's very the, the, the two things, the two experiences are very similar. Now both the Game of Thrones and Silent Hill, they're very. <coughs> high in intensity in terms of, you know, all the scenes and stuff. What's it like, you know, having to always go into some of these high intensity scenes all the time? It's, I mean, uh, I think if you're always going to be doing a rom-com or a domestic drama where things are less intense, you may want that environment. You might want to, I want to do something like Thrones or everything. It's the same with me. I've done a lot of stuff which is, ever, the stakes are very, very high all the time. And I'm, I now am feeling in my career that I want to, I want to try out everything. So I want to do something which, where it, where it isn't like that. I don't always want to be doing these. I think I'll give myself a heart attack if I do. But, but yeah, so uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it is tiring. It is tiring. Filming Thrones, filming this, very tiring because in this you're always about to die, or this, you know, the stakes are so high and it's can be exhausting. Doing that. Kieran Hines. Yeah. Kieran Hines is one of the most lovely men you will ever meet, and also one of the most fantastic, fantastic actors. Like I, I'm so privileged with the people I've worked with. 
uh, the other act, older actors I've worked with, and, and he's now another addition to that list that I can say I've worked with. I know it took a while to find the writing romance. Do you know what it was about him that they were like, he finally found this character? He just is. I was on every day. Uh, I didn't get many breaks, and um, I decided I'm blind as a bat, and I decided to not wear my contacts because it was like midnight shoots, and I was kind of going, you know. So I thought, oh no, I won't wear. I'll be fine. And we were on this big platform that we had to had to wet down for the for the visual effect, and then we had to have a, we had a fire ring around this platform. We had red pyramid, ten foot tall, wielding an axe, double my size. We had another monster that I'm not, I won't name because otherwise I'll give it all away. And I had to run through these two stunt people doing this fight, blind, you know, and, and on this wet surface with fire around, and I had to get to Sean Bean. And I just, I remember Bria being just so happy to finally kind of reach the other side of the platform. But there were days like that that was just like, this is insane. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, it was How did really it change your experience um, being able to work with actual actors who are playing these monsters yeah. versus... It's amazing. I mean, I don't, you know, I, I really think, you know, if you can do it, I don't know why you wouldn't in film because, um, you know, I was saying there's only one CGI-made monster in this film. And every... Red Pyramid was you know, was performed by the same stunt person, this incredible man, and with an incred incredible physique, and, you know, all the, all the different characters, the, the nurses were contortionists and dancers, and so, but they also all had personalities, they all had characters, and they could all really up their performance on every take, and you can't do that with CGI, so, um, so I think it... It breathes a life into these characters, which I don't think you can do from behind a computer console. So, um, yeah, so I, I was, I was um, genuinely petrified most of the time. <laughs> Is it challenging to bring nuances to your character um, when you're terrified from start to finish in a movie like that? Uh, no, I think the terror is, you know, that's the kind of icing on the cake. You know, you, you gradually give her more layers <laughs> and... and um, and, and immerse yourself in a role until it kind of become, feels like your own skin. And then um, terror is, and, and fear is something really... I, I screamed before every take because it does a... It gives you an adrenaline rush and, and, and your body reacts like you're... It's, it's amazing. Your eyes kind of water and all sorts of things happen. So I screamed before every take. And, um, and your instincts are also heightened. So um, it would always just be 